If you've been browsing the internet, maybe TikTok, maybe Instagram, looking for some new makeup tips, come across a video of someone trying on maybe a new lip liner, lipstick, or blush. You know what? That looks amazing on that person. Let me go ahead and try it out. You order it maybe from Sephora or you go buy it in store and then bring it home, try it on, and then you're like, this looks so unflattering on me. Maybe it's pulling super orange or it just doesn't have that same magic that it had on the person that you saw on the internet. This is a familiar story to you. You're gonna find this fair skin makeup tutorial super helpful because I have been there too many times to count. So these are my top tips and tricks and favorite products and shades of products that I have found over the many years of trying things that don't look good to find the absolute best of the best that makes fair skin glow that just works for us without looking too heavy or makeup-y. It's just amazing. Honestly, I wish I had this video so many years ago. So really hope you found it helpful, but let's get started. First things first, we gotta perfect the base, even out the discoloration, the redness, anything else we may have going on. But first we need to get a little bit of glow going to counteract the dullness. One of my favorites is the Say Glowy Super Gel in Star Glow, the lightest shade. If you're worried about an illuminator being too dark, go for this one because it really is just, it's pretty translucent, so it's not going to deepen your skin, say like maybe the e.l.f. Glow Wand would because they still don't have great fair shades with that. I grabbed two pumps of this. This is water-based, so it feels really light on the skin. You're not gonna get any heaviness. You're gonna do a little bit of layering, and you can tell it just gives you a really pretty glow. You could keep this just on the high points if you have a lot of texture. I do it all over, so it's up to you. Really just enhances the skin, it makes it feel nice and prepped and ready for makeup, and it just looks super pretty and glowy without being too obvious on the skin. Moving along, before we go into our actual base makeup, Something that's really helpful and important when you have fair skin is if you correct your discolorations beforehand, you don't have to use as much makeup. As you may know, a lot of stuff just shows through on our skin, dark spots, redness, anything else. So my favorite one to use is this e.l.f. color corrector in green. They have other shades of this depending on what you need it for. Green is primarily for redness, which is what I like to correct before my foundation. I do have these big red spots that I like to color correct so I can end up using less makeup because I don't want to look cakey. I don't think anyone does. So that's the point of the color correction. And I do also have fair olive skin, so this helps correct the tone of my foundation as well. I like to use the sponge. It just thins everything out, applies it really beautifully, all the good stuff. Now this may just seem like an extra step you don't really need to do, but trust me, it's really quick and easy and it does go a long way. Next up for our base, I have two formulas here. What's not as important is the formula, but is finding the right shade for your skin, which honestly I still struggle with. It's just so hard to find, but I do have a tip for you. Grab a white color corrector. This is a concealer from Cover FX. Elf used to sell one. I'm not sure if they have one anymore. I also have another option that's in powder form I'm gonna mention a little bit later on in this video. But this is so great because you can just mix it in if any foundation is too dark. It's not gonna correct the undertone, but it will correct the tone of it. It will make anything lighter. This comes in handy so much. Danessa Myricks also has her foundation in white, but that is super thick and full coverage. So it kind of depends on what you're looking for. This one from Cover FX, pretty simple and easy to use. Both of these that I have here are thankfully close enough to my skin tone that I don't need the white corrector, but trust me, it comes in handy a lot. It would be worth finding a mix in product that you really like. My everyday base options are, they definitely have some coverage to them, but they're a little bit lighter on the skin, look more skin-like. The Iconic London Super Smoother Skin Tint. Really like this one. It's a great one if you have more oily skin and you want a skin tint that has a little bit more coverage. The Maybelline Super Stay Skin Tint's also another great one. Shade is slightly dark on me. This is super pretty. It does have like a luminous to it. Since we have the Say Glowy Super Gel on, I think I'm gonna go with the more satiny formula, which is the one from Iconic London. I'm gonna use the shade Neutral Fair. I feel like some skin tints can have really crappy fair shade ranges. This one is pretty decent, so that's another pro to it. it. Has this little squeezy bottle. This is another product I like to use with my sponge, and because we did that color correcting, we're not gonna have to use a ton of this. It also has really good coverage for being a skin tint. Good rule of thumb with any foundation, but especially if you have fair skin, is just make sure you're blending onto the neck. 
you can tell it's not my perfect match, so I always just blend down and hope it works out in the end. But I do have some correcting options for foundation shades later on. Let's go ahead and move on to the under eyes. So I have a corrector here. This one's from Pixie. This is the peach one. Absolutely love this. It's a great shade for fair skin darkness. And I just take a little bit of this. I haven't been using this a ton lately because my concealer is really good coverage but if i feel like the dark circles are popping off a little bit extra this is a really good one to use instead of like layering a bunch of concealer correctors go such a long way this one's a really nice formula too it is a bit thicker it does not crease it doesn't interfere with other concealer formulas it's kind of like a hidden gem at the drugstore before i share my favorite concealer let's talk about defining the skin contouring in terms of liquid and cream products the one that i really like for every day because it's thin it looks really natural the kvd mod con contour this one's the shade fair cool this is just the perfect neutral cool shade for fair skin because it's a gel it's a little bit more sheer so it doesn't look like you have like a contour stick on your face it's just such a great formula it comes in this little doe foot you could also use the elf contour wand in cool that's a really great shade i just like how this one's more sheer so i like to dot that around the face and then blend it in i'm using a brush but i typically use a sponge or brush whatever i have on hand it honestly works great either way as you can tell, it literally, like, it's kind of foolproof because it's so sheer, it doesn't, it's really hard to mess it up, you know? And then after it's blended, I will go back in with my sponge to make sure everything is smoothed out. Also, the extra product that's on the sponge from the skin tint will help blend everything even further. I think it's very, very important when you have fair skin for your contour to be a true cool toned. That one's my favorite for every day. I will link my other favorites in the description below. So make sure you check there in case you wanted some like cream options or just different formulas because I've tested a lot and so many of them are more like bronzers than not even good bronzers. So yeah, cool tone contour, very important. Really sculpts the face and actually looks natural. For a concealer, this is a new favorite of mine. It's so good. If you have problems with under eye creasing or you need a lot of coverage, high performance, recently tried this House Labs concealer. I am obsessed with it. It is so good. This is the shade Fair Golden 02. It literally just smooths out everything, covers everything that you needed to cover without looking heavy or cakey. So I just like to do any areas because we do have a little bit lighter coverage on they need some more help, like dark spots, acne scarring, stuff like that. And then of course blending with a trusty sponge. I think the House Labs line has really good fair shades as well. If you needed something to brighten, they have some really great, really light shades. They also have a white version of their foundation if you wanted to try that as a mix-in for your other foundations. Just a really cool brand. I always like to take the leftover concealer on my sponge, just go right under the contour. So I do have redness down here. Just helps to boost that a little bit. And I also have discoloration on my lids, so I'm gonna take this onto my lids. Another age-old tale if you have fair skin is probably the putting setting powder on your under eyes and then realizing that it just completely darkened them and now you have like weird yellow under eyes and then you try it on your face and it darkens your face. So yeah, short story. Long story short, <laughs> setting powders can be a pain in the butt. If you want something that is truly translucent but performs well, the Dermablend setting powder is a classic. As you could tell, there is no color to this like there is to the Laura Mercier powders. I also really love the Elia one. Stick to things that actually look white in the packaging. That way they won't actually turn the color of your face something else. So I just like using this under the eyes and then I will go in with a different powder for the rest of the face. I do the T-zone right on the sides of the nose and into the smile line. Just all my more oily areas I really like this powder for. Even better is this actually almost has like a slight brightening effect on my skin, which is really great. The Laura Mercier, the small brightening powder, that's a good, more translucent brightening option for fair skin. This one is just like a classic go-to for basically everything. Tinted powders, they can be really difficult, so I stray away from most of them, but one that I tried recently, it has a really nice light tint to it. It's yellow tinted, so it will help with redness and dullness. This is actually from Bobbi Brown. It's the Vitamin Enriched Press Powder in Yellow. It's this really beautiful baked powder formula 
has a very very slight yellow tint but it's a very pastel so i don't find that it darkens my face it's actually really beautiful not the best for oil controlling it does have a slight sheen to it so what i like to do is use it for the rest of my face use the derma blend one just in the center those areas where i don't get as oily this is going to give it a really nice skin like finish i'm going to use this with a fluffy brush you can even see like the tint that it gives the brush but once i put it on my face it doesn't really change things too much other than helping to dock down any redness or discoloration since this is an everyday look there's not too many extra steps since we already did the kvd mod con contour I don't necessarily feel like I need a bronzer on top of it. You could just do either or depending on what you like. I do have all my other fair skin bronzer favorites in my fair skin videos that I've done previously that are just, they're super light, they're super neutral tone, they're not going to be orange. So I will have those linked below the video so you can check them out. Moving on to blush, I have two here that I just absolutely love. I think the key to finding a blush that works for you is really one that matches your undertone but also the sort of lightness of it i love a pastel blush it looks so good on fair skin these aren't as pastel still really pretty though because i'm into more of a bright blush at the moment but if you were very fair the han cosmetics baby pink blush it is super light also drugstore option the l'oreal true match blush here see how pastel this is perfect for a very fair skin but one of my first favorites i find this really flattering if you are more like neutral neutral cool or fair olive like i am the elf the monochromatic multi stick these are so inexpensive this shade peony is beautiful these are more of like a creamy satin matte formula this just has like a really pretty bluish mauve undertone and when it's blended out on the skin it is just so pretty and flattering and it has that slight shimmer in it to really brighten the face you can also use these on your lips so such a good bang for your buck but my favorite rms beauty french rose i'm obsessed with this this is a very cool toned blue based pink it's a baked formula so it looks pretty bright but this just does something to my face that like i've never found in a blush before it really wakes everything up i literally cannot recommend this one enough if you're a little bit scared of the shade don't worry just go light-handed and it's just so so pretty they do have other shades if you have a different undertone this one is my personal favorite though and i also love the glow just look at that it's like a blush and highlight in one it is just so flattering the sparkles in it are chunky it's just very finely milled it is like my favorite part of my makeup routine honestly oh i do also have a coupon code for 20 percent rms so you don't have to pay full price for this if you wanted to get it or any other goodies in the description as always i used to never wear blush because i have so much redness in my cheeks but finding a blush like this that really suits you it kind of just brings that life back to your face because we can look dull very easily and it just looks like you're glowing from within it is so pretty really love that one on to highlight another very very tricky thing for fair skin right finding something that is light enough the right tone it's not too chunky or glittery my more natural option this is from laura mercier i feel like this is so underrated the matte radiance baked powder in highlight 01 looks like it might be too dark but it is not at all it's very very finely milled so it doesn't really show up like it's one of my most natural highlights it's more of a glowy powder I want something a little bit more dramatic the house labs the gel radiant highlight this one is the silver shade which if you have a hard time like maybe you feel like everything pulls gold or champagne on you and you haven't quite found a flattering highlight or you like more pink tone highlights this is a really good option to try it seems weird i know it's silver but once it's on the skin it is like it's so pretty and just Again, it does something to the face that I haven't found in a lot of other highlights. Since we have more of a glowy blush though, I'm gonna go in with my subtler option, which is the Laura Mercier Baked Powder on a fan brush. Just a little bit on the tops of the cheekbones and right down the nose. Just gonna boost the highlight a little bit. Before I go off and do my brows, this is an additional step that's totally not necessary, but it's really good to have on hand if you just feel like you need some brightening. This just came out from one size. It's their Stage White Powder Foundation. 
yes, white. Like I said, with the white concealer, having something that is pure white can really come in handy because sometimes just our shades, our base shades are not bright enough. If I really wanna amp up and just bring out the highlight points of my face, I will use this, but it's a matte formula, which is really interesting. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this on the brush that I use to set my under eyes. And I'm basically just going to go right on the inner corner area, go very light handed with this. And then I just drag the excess to the outer edge of my eye and then whatever is left over grab a little bit more right below the cheekbone and then you should be able to tell the difference this side it's just going to lift that part of the face a little bit more versus over here it's a really easy quick tip it doesn't add like a lot of extra cakiness or weight to the makeup so just perfect thank you patrick star for making a white foundation amazing Another really cool way to use this powder foundation really only applies if you have light brows like I do, but if I feel like my brows are too dark, I need to lighten them up. I'll just go in with a little bit of this on a fluffy brush. And sometimes I'll just do this on the inner part of my brow. That way I get that like soft gradient. Or if I just feel like they're too dark in general, I'll go through all of them. And I don't feel like it like sticks to them in a weird way and makes them look white. It kind of just like dulls down the shade of my eyebrow pencil. Okay, for eyes, one of my favorite parts, also something that can be really difficult, can look very, very makeup-y and heavy on us super easily, eye makeup in general. So finding the right tones and shades are crucial. My new favorite, the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette. I have a video doing three, actually I think like five looks with this palette. This is honestly a fair skin dream. The tones, the undertones, also the like depth of these eyeshadows, they're very pastel, which is perfect. That's just one thing. It doesn't like, it depends on what kind of tone you like and what kind of undertone your skin is, but stick with things that are very light and pastel because they're gonna be more buildable. It's not gonna look as makeup-y. is an exception if you have like dark hair and light skin, you could definitely tolerate a lot darker eye makeup. I go way further into that into my other fair skin videos, but for me, if you're just very light in general, like everything on my body is light. If I keep my eyeshadow light, it looks a lot more, har sorry, this is garbage truck. It looks a lot more harmonious versus something that's very heavy, which can be used to your advantage, but okay, that's for, <laughs> that's for another day, a different video. I will have a playlist of all my fair skin videos below if you're curious about that topic. So first things first, I like to go in with this very muted taupe shade on a fluffy brush. And I just use this as a transition. If you wanted a more affordable version that has similar tones to this palette, ColourPop Stone Cold Fox is a great one. It's a lot bigger of a palette, but you're getting very similar tones. And I just love an eyeshadow that I can like not worry about it being too much for me. Like I can just blend it out and know it's gonna look good. I also like to keep my lower lash line very light or else things can start to look heavy. So I just go in with that same shade that I used on a smaller brush. I just keep it on the outer portion of my eye. And I do like how this palette has this sort of muted pink shade. If you wanted to take things a little bit more pink, you feel like that's really flatter on you, it's super easy to do. Actually, I'm gonna take a little bit of that. The shade name is Vague, just on the outer corner of the eye. And then blend that in into the crease shade. There's a lot of possibilities with this palette of just doing like one shade all over the lid or using some as liners. It's just super versatile. Honestly worth the money. This is my only Natasha Denona palette and I really am glad that I got it. So once you found the right tones for fair skin, it's kind of more dependent on your eye shape, right? Of how you do your makeup. If you want a video on how I do my makeup for round eyes, definitely let me know. But since this is an everyday look, I actually just keep it like this in terms of the crease shades. For my lid shade, this shade right here, it's a very light sparkly pink. Absolutely love this shade. It's called Mia. It's like a little bit sparkly for every day, but honestly, when I'm doing such simple looks, just adds again that like glow to the face. Okay, one of the most game-changing things that I did to my makeup that just made everything look so much better is changing the tone of my eyeliner from black to brown. Brown is just a lot softer, it looks less harsh. I also don't use liquid liner, I tend to use a shadow as a liner, which again looks softer. So I'm gonna take the dark brown in here, which is called Silhouette on a angled brush. This one's from ColourPop. And I personally like to do a little bit of winged liner just on the outer corner. 
And I don't bring the shade in too much. Shadow liner is just so easy to do as well and very easy to clean up if you ever make a mistake, which is why I love it, especially for every day. If you're in a rush, it's not gonna like smudge everywhere like a liquid liner does. Yet another great way to use this one size white powder is to clean up the eyeshadow. I take a flat brush, this one's from Trixie Cosmetics, pick up a little bit of that powder foundation and then you could just sharpen up your wing and it also helps to just lift that part of the eye. This next step is also kind of unnecessary but it's one of my favorite parts of my makeup that adds just like this twinkle to your eye that is so pretty especially if you have just very light skin. This is the NYX eyeliner in rose gold. It's a very shimmery light pencil and what I do is I mostly do this if I don't have like a shimmer on my lid, like if it's something a little bit more muted. I just do this on the inner corner of my eye, meeting up where that eyeliner stopped. And then I also do this right on the lower lash line. It's a really fun and pretty way to still use eyeliners but not have it look super harsh. So in general, just keep your eyeliner a little bit lighter and just so pretty. I love the sparkle. I'm all about the sparkle. If you're not, you could just opt out of all these shimmers and just switch them to a matte. And then to finish off the eye, grab a pure matte white shadow. This one is from NYX. It's called Whipped Cream. This is my favorite because most palettes just do not have a shade that is bright enough for me. So if you just grab a matte white like this one or a shimmery white, goes a long way. You could also use the powder foundation. Because the eyes are so shimmery, I'm just gonna keep the inner corner a little bit more matte. So sort of same concept that I mentioned with the eyeliner is switching from black to brown. Same with mascara. Black, I always opt for if I want like more dramatic look. This looks so much more natural. The Maybelline Sky High one, by the way, in brown, really nice one. Because it just, it looks way more harmonious, especially with the brown eyeliner. And this is more if you have light eyes. If you have dark hair or like dark eyes and light skin, like I mentioned before, you could definitely tolerate some darker tones. It'll actually probably look a little bit better on you. So keep that in mind. Moving on to the lips, this is one of the most difficult aspects of my makeup. So I spent such a long time finding the perfect undertones and tones of lipsticks, liners, and glosses. So make sure you stay tuned for this because Honestly, you're not gonna wanna miss these. They are so flattering. Again, more specific to like neutral cool undertones, but if you have fair skin, I think they're gonna look really flattering on you. Starting with lip liners. My old favorite used to be Lime Crime Topist, but I have two alternatives here. First off, ColourPop, the cool BFF version. If you feel like all lip liners pull cool on you, I mean warm on you, try the cool BFF. It is so flattering, especially if you have very light lips like I do. Another one, this one is even lighter. This is really moisturizing, so it doesn't stay a very long time, but I still really like it. It's the Sephora Gel Liner. This one's in the nude shade, quite similar to the ColourPop one, but as you can tell, it is even lighter. I'm gonna go in with the ColourPop one today. If you want to overline your lips like I did today, it's also really crucial to have a good shade. So make sure you save these mentally or just check in the description. I'll have the links because the amount of lip liners I have in my collection that pull like orange worm on me are ridiculous. Like the majority of them I just do not use. These are my favorites. Another trick, this is if you have really light lips and you want something that's super long wearing that is gonna give you color even when your lipstick wears off. This is my absolute favorite trick. Grab the Flower Beauty Lip Stains. These are my favorite formulas. I've tried the Victoria Beckham, not my favorite. I feel like they have more flattering shades for fair skin. These are the lip stains. I have two here. I have Play and I have Sass. You put this on, let it dry, and then do your lipstick or just wear it on its own with like a gloss. When your lipstick or gloss wears off, you still have that color on your lips so you're not left with like no lips like it looks like I have when I don't have anything on my lips. So that's just a really cool trick. You can also use these to sort of alter the shade of your lipstick, this one especially, which is more of like a cool orchid shade. If you wear this under a more warm tone lipstick, it is gonna help neutralize it a little bit. But let's talk lipstick shades here. I have three that are just amazing. I can always count on them and they look so freaking flattering. I think this is my all time favorite, MAC Viva Glam 2. This is just, it's like the lipstick version of those lip liners. If you're looking for a very natural looking nude that's neutral cool toned, the shade, as you can tell, still has that like a little bit of pinkiness to it, but it is so, so flattering. 
This next one is a little bit more pink, but still neutral and very flattering. It's Baby by Merit Beauty. You can see side to side, they're actually really similar. The Merit one looks like it's a little bit more muted, but for some reason on the lips, this one pulls a little bit more pink and the MAC one is definitely more neutral. Another great one, the Urban Decay Vice Lipsticks. This is the shade OG Back Talk. I believe they also sell this shade in their other formulas. This one is a little bit more pink, purple, like has some more color to it, but it is still extremely flattering. As you can tell, they all look like they're from the same color family, which is like the key here. The most flattering pinks for me personally, if things pull warm on you, try these out. If not, you could probably pull off some more neutral warm shades. So for these, let me show you what the MAC one looks like because it is my personal favorite. I mean, it's just like my perfect nude neutral lipstick. I am so glad that I found this one. Formula is also beautiful. Like it just looks natural on me and not like I have lipstick on. Another lip tip I will also give you though is if you have a very light lipstick on hand, this one is from Flower Beauty. It's called Bear Pout. It is on the warmer side, but it is a very light, light, light pink lipstick. If you ever need to lighten something up or create dimension like I just did on the center of the lips with this one, it's just really great with fair skin if you need to lighten something up. Super handy. For lip gloss, you can really have a little bit more fun because they're more sheer, but I still like to keep it cool toned. Some of my favorites, the About Face Blue Gloss. If you ever seen this trend on like TikTok, Instagram or whatever, really, really great one for fair skin as long as they're not too pigmented. Also a good one if things pull warm because it cools down any lipstick. So it is actually a really soupy, soupy? <laughs> so it's actually a really great one to have on hand. It's trendy, but it's not one of those trends that's like useless. Like, you know, you could actually find some good use for it. I also really love the CoverGirl Yummy Gloss. This one's the shade Lavender. Any of the like more cool tone ones. I just love the formula of these. So plumping and pretty. Loving the lip combo. This I usually wear on its own or in a combination with like the lip stain. I feel like it works a little bit better that way versus on top of lipsticks. Let me show you this blue one from About Face. This has a little bit of shimmer in it. It's just so pretty. Really cools things down. So this was my everyday go-to makeup for fair skin. I really hope you found this helpful and maybe discovered some new tips that you haven't heard of before or some products that you want to try. Everything will be linked below. If you want to know shade names, all that info is below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next one. There's two videos here and I'll see you in those. Bye.